Hello, TGIF. Happy Friday. It's the end of a long, cold week for some of us, and it is the last day of our five essential skills in knitting sessions. So let me go ahead and present. While I am waiting for people to get on the call, I'm just going to uh, get my slides ready to roll. Awesome. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Let me get my act together here. Okay. Hi, and welcome. Uh, Welcome to day five of five essential skills in knitting. Hi, Kinette. My name is Carrie Capone and I'm the founder of the knitting hand, the spinning hand. Let me just start over again. <laughs> Y'all, I had a little hair accessory mishap right before I was supposed to go live and uh, my barrette broke and fell on the floor. And I know this is a tiny problem in the scheme of things, but uh, here I am. <laughs> All right, let's start over. Good morning. My name is Carrie. I'm the founder of The Spinning Hand, and I wanted to just take a minute to those of you who are new to The Spinning Hand uh, to let you know what we stand for. So let me add. Uh, and today we're going to talk about finishing. So how to finish your work. We're going to talk about seaming, blocking, and weaving in ends. Hi, Debbie. She says, sunny, windy, and 17 degrees. Yep. I talked to my mama this morning and she said she took a cold day off from work. They still had work, but it was so cold. She's up in Rochester, New York, that she said, nope, I'm staying home. Three day weekend. All right. So let me get to the next slide. So here's what we're all about. Uh, number one, we, we are designed, we are founded. The whole reason for our existence is to support other women. We prefer to support small business owners who are women. Uh, we prefer to support black owned businesses and minority owned businesses whenever possible. And one of my favorite things to do is to include products in our offerings that are made by other uh, small business owners and handmade business owners, just like me. Um, and we also love supporting businesses whose products are made in the USA. Uh, the second thing that we stand for is extreme customer service. Your delight is our top priority. So we're real people. And I, when I say we, I, I mean Jess. She's the lovely lady on the left here. And myself, we're here for your delight and happiness. <laughs> so you are the reason we exist. And uh and we're real people and we answer our emails. So we're a very small business. Um, we're a small team of two and growing. So we've just recently added a third team member um, and then a fourth social media manager this year. And it's only February, but we're a very small group and we, we aim to answer your questions, to address your concerns. Uh, that's why we're here. And, and really to bring you lots of joy in knitting. Um, we believe that your knitting time is precious and it should be joyful. So you deserve clear, easy to follow instructions. All of our patterns are tech edited and they're tested by knitters just like you so that we work out any tricky bits, any confusing bits, any mistakes, hopefully all the mistakes ahead of time. And uh, I just can't think of another business that takes its pattern test editing and testing as seriously as we do. We really want you to have the most joyful experience when you knit. And finally, uh, for today, you deserve to work with the good yarn. So the yarn that we send to you, hi, Nikki, good afternoon. The yarn that we send to you is the highest quality yarn that we can find, um, beautiful natural materials, we use merino wool, we use cashmere, we use silk, we use linen, we use cotton, um, but, but really yarn that's gonna feel good in your hands and it's gonna make the most of your precious knitting time. 
Okay. Let's get on to today's topic, which is uh, the fifth essential skill to being a really great and joyful and uh, successful knitter is finishing, how to finish your work. So you can consider this a tiny mini tutorial in finishing school. So uh, what do I mean when I talk about finishing? I mean, finishing your work. So um, at the end of your project, uh, blocking. Uh, how are you blocking your piece? Do you block? And seaming the pieces together, if you have a project with more than one piece, or if it's a cowl and you're doing a seam at the end, you're making it uh, into a loop, how do you seam that together? And then also we're going to talk about weaving in the ends, which is either something that you enjoy doing and it's meditative, or maybe it's a nightmare to you, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so there are two schools of thought when it comes to finishing. There's the amateur way. And as my mentor Mira said to me, uh, the any old which way way. And then there is the professional way. So amateur does not mean bad and it doesn't mean wrong. Amateur also means lover. And there are some situations in which just getting her done is the best way to do it. And that is fine. Um, and then there's the professional way. And here we see a picture of my hero, uh, one of my knitting design heroes, Shirley Payton. And just a quick PSA, if you're interested in becoming a professional designer of knitwear, I highly recommend that you check out her book, which is called Knitwear Design Workshop. I, think I have it with me. I'm not an affiliate, I'm just a fan. Knitwear Design Workshop. It is complete and it's wonderful. Um, so if you are making things to sell or, you're, or you have a project that's uh, delicate or specific enough that you just really want it to look professional, then good finishing is the best way to do it. You can, you can actually cover up like an ocean of errors with great finishing. So onward. Okay. Let's talk about blocking. For those of you who are on the call, um, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love blocking? Do you absolutely love it or do you put it off? I'm gonna say that I am, um, I'm like a five. <laughs> so yeah, I once I get it done, once I block my piece, I enjoy it, but I will save them up and, and just do a whole bunch of blocking at once because I find it to be a little bit, it's like this whole extra chore, right? Jessica says blocking is magic, especially for lace. Well, that's the thing is like, I put off doing it, but then once you do it, oh my goodness, it is like, it, it just looks so beautiful. It really is magic, not only with lace, but anything that's wool, um, things that, that you know maybe they look a little uneven a little lumpy with proper blocking it just looks like it was made by a machine and a good machine <laughs> all right let me see here so three different ways of blocking that we're going to mention today one is steam blocking so using an iron using steam um, or a steamer if you have a professional steamer um, what i like to do is put a clean muslin cloth or like a thin dish towel over my piece if I'm steam blocking it um, and it and it just needs to be lightly blocked right so you're just letting the steam infuse the fibers and just letting the fibers breathe a little bit um, you know when you use natural fibers they came from a living animal and uh, and so they they really do kind of breathe just like our hair gets frizzy with steam um, wool will sort of bloom and blossom with the steam. Um, yeah, and, and Deborah says, yes, uh, definitely longevity in the end results. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so steam blocking, you know, you'll, you'll want your ironing board, you want your iron. Um, I like to use a nice cloth, like I said, and, um, and just let the steam um, kind of infuse the fibers. Um, here in the image, you can see the pins and um, 
really the goal is to pin your pieces into shape. Or if you're doing a lace project, maybe you'll use blocking wires, but you want your piece to be the dimensions that you want it to be as a finished product. So sometimes, uh, well, if it's a good pattern, it will say what the dimensions are in the pattern. Um, but buyer beware, we must be realistic. Um, and if you've knitted something and you, you didn't block it when it was time to test your gauge, or you're like, well, I'm a really tight knitter, but it'll just all come out in blocking. To some extent, it's true and you can stretch pieces, but we can't be ridiculous here and expect, you know, an extra large if we've knitted a small. Okay. Um, also, two other things. Um, there's, you can block using a spray bottle, um, which I particularly like. I like to have a clean, obviously, spray bottle on hand with a little bit of water and a little bit of wool wash in there. And, um, and then you can spray if you don't want to use hot steam. Uh, and then finally, the most, I don't know if you would call it extreme, but you can wet block something when it really needs to be um, completely shaped into something, you know, you know, if you're using, if you're doing like um, something like this sweater, which is made of super bulky yarn, and it just needs to be maybe blocked a little bit, then spray blocking, steam blocking is fine. Um, but if you're doing a lace shawl, and it's, it's going to be pinned exactly into place, then you're going to want to um, wet block. Um, let me just take a pause here and say um, that if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that is totally fine. <laughs> and in many of our um, in many of our orders and our shipments, we will tuck in instructions for how to block. Um, which is which tends to be very useful, and I even refer to it still these days. Um, but go ahead and, and put in the comments, even if you're watching the replay, let me know um, if you have experience with blocking or if this is kind of a new world to you. Um, Susan says, I'm not a fan of weaving in ends. I do it all at the end, but blocking is a must. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about weaving in ends in a moment. So ideally you block first and then you seam the pieces together and, and then you weave in the ends. Um, but I have to admit, sometimes I do it out of order. So let's talk briefly about steaming, uh, seaming. Let me get my notes here. So there are a variety of ways to, uh, to seam your pieces. Go ahead and, okay, this is a new world for you, Nikki totally cool. And it's fine to let it like wash over you, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but these, these sessions are recorded. So you can always come back and look and get, um, and get tips and tricks afterward. Um, so my mother is a crocheter and she makes beautiful pieces, but she hates, hates, hates seaming and sewing things together. Um, I think if she could crochet all of her seams together, that's what she would do. Sometimes that's a totally cool way to do your thing is you can crochet pieces together. And Deborah says, I've never seamed. Okay, interesting. So just let's take a moment there. So Deborah, when you do the anniversary cowl, that's one piece in the round, right? And so you just have ends to weave in. So do you tend to do things that don't need seaming? Um, I don't know why, but I am a huge fan. I love, love, love sewing pieces together. My friend Tina taught me the mattress stitch, which is what you see in progress here on this slide. And once I learned how to do it, it's like a whole new world opened up to me. Okay. Deborah says, yes. All right. Got it. Um, and you can knit sweaters and I love knitting sweaters. Like this one is knit in the round. It's knit top down. There's very little seaming to be done, but I really love the look of a nice cardigan in five pieces, sleeve, sleeve, front, front, and back. And to me, there's something so magical about making an invisible seam using the mattress stitch. Yes. And Jess says, seams give extra stability 
for things like sweaters. I love using the mattress stitch too. And so you really want stability, um, especially in the shoulders. Um, like this, this sweater is fine. It's, it's, it's not going to fall apart at all. But, but when you're, um, when you're seaming your shoulders together, you want to make sure that you have, have everything like ready to roll. And, um, and there are different ways to give your seams more strength. So the third way, aside from using a needle, I call it a tapestry needle, but a sewing needle back and forth to weave in the ends, um, crocheting your, your pieces together, which I think adds bulk and sometimes you don't want that. You can also do a knitted bind off or a knitted knitting things together. There's one called the three needle bind off and there are other kinds as well so that you are kind of knitting as you go and you, you don't need to use a, a tapestry needle. Um, one of the things that I'm definitely going to highlight or add to our Facebook group ASAP is a mattress stitch tutorial. Um, once you get the hang of it, you're going to just be looking for things to mattress stitch together. I guarantee it. <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about weaving in ends. If you have a lot of stash and you want to do a stash buster blanket, like the one that's pictured here, um, or you love Fair Isle, as I do, and you want to make something with a ton of different colors, it's all good and well, but then you'll have a lot of ends to tuck in. And even if you're just making one piece, uh, a one skein wonder with one end at the beginning and one at the end, you still, depending on the project, want your ends to be tucked in as invisibly and as beautifully as possible and keep them secure so that you're not walking around enjoying your day and then there's like a little end that pops off. So, um, just the same as seaming, your goal here with weaving in ends is invisibility and strength and security. Um, so again, similar to seaming, you can crochet the ends in using a small crochet hook. And my suggestion is just to, as much as possible, find a seam and weave in your ends there. If there's no seam to be found, right, like it's something it's it's in the round or it's lacy or that kind of thing, try, I shouldn't even say try, this is almost an unbreakable law of knitting, is start your new ball or your new color at the end of the row, the beginning of the row, so that you're at the edge there. Maybe it's not a seam, but it's the edge of the work. Um, there's nothing more visible than uh a knot or a join, I should say, like right in the front middle of your sweater. Whereas if you do it like on the neckline, you know, like in the back uh, or the underarm, that kind of thing. As my mama says, if anyone is looking that closely, they're looking too close and you've got some other issues. So definitely try to weave in the ends where you can't really see them. Um, and so for those of you who are watching live, what are some of your favorite tips and tricks for weaving in ends. Um, I'm going to tell you my favorite. It's, it sounds a little gross, but if I'm using yarn that is almost 100% wool or mostly wool, I love to do the spit splice. <laughs> now, I don't actually spit on the yarn, but I do dunk it in water, uh, the end of one yarn ball, and I dunk in water the end of the new yarn ball, and I spread them out. I, I make them all fuzzy, and then I put them together, and then I roll them with my hands, and it's like a little tiny bit of felting. And then if it's if it's like a really thick piece of yarn, um, I might even do a couple little tack stitches in there just to give it like extreme strength. And then you just keep knitting, and it's like you just have one ball of yarn. Sometimes when you have super bulky yarns, which I love to work with, then you can get away with that kind of thing. Um, but for something that's very lacy and it's really going to show if you have um, a spit splice, then I don't recommend it. Instead, what I recommend is you start at the beginning of the row 
or round or whatever. And um, I do tie a loose knot. I leave maybe five or six inches of each piece of yarn and I tie just a loose knot, like a placeholder knot, and I keep knitting and I enjoy my project. Then at the end, like Susan, I undo those loose knots and then I weave in the ends. So I do save it till the end as well, usually. It's also kind of a place marker for when you're starting a new ball of yarn. So that's, that's my story for weaving in ends and I am sticking to it. All right, now I want to uh, thank those of you who showed up live. I so appreciate you. Um, it always feels strange talking to nobody. So I'm really happy that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, question from Deborah. She says, is Kitchener stitch not a seaming stitch? I haven't done it. I've heard the term. Yes. So Kitchener stitch is a way to join two rows of live stitches. And just please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I use it when I'm working on the toe of a sock. So I have like a row of stitches that are live. So if you think about a sock and you work you work the sock from the top down to the toe, then once you get to the toe, you've made a tube, 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 tube. You get smaller and smaller. And then maybe you have like eight stitches here and eight stitches here. And so Kitchener stitch is a way to sew the stitches together so that they look like it's been knitted together. I'm not sure if that is the best way to describe it, but that's, that's when I use it most. Um, I also use it in mending. So I've, I've become known around town as the woman who can mend a sweater. Okay, so Jess says, yes, Kitchener is for joining the live stitches together. A top-down sock is a great example. Um, and so sometimes I'll get projects or challenges like someone will have a, a, moth, a moth hole or their dog ate their favorite blanket. And so there's a hole here. And when I want to attach stitches there, I'll use it for mending as well. Awesome. Okay, so now I have an invitation for you. If you like what you've seen this week and you would love to grow your knitting skills and you want to deepen your knowledge of the essential skills in knitting, I really think you should check out our spring subscription box. So I have an invitation for you. Today is the last day. Jess and I talked about maybe extending this a couple days and honestly, I can't do it. <laughs> it's, been, it's been five crazy days and it's been really fun, but this weekend, I'm going to visit my son and I'm going to relax. So today is it. We are closing the doors tonight to our subscription box club. Um, let me, all right, there we go. So there, there is the link. And Jess, I'd be so grateful if you could post that link in the comments. Um, Kinnett, I promise I don't pay for these uh, kind words from Kinnett, but she says that ours are the best knitting boxes out there. Thank you. And Kinnett, I'm actually featuring your words in a future slide. So, <laughs> so I would just like to invite you to join our knitting club. Um, the boxes are being sent out in the next two weeks. The first project modeled here by our beautiful designer, Jessica, is the anniversary cowl. This is our second anniversary of um, sending out knitting kits. And this is the second year that we've done it every week. Um, <laughs> Deborah's, Deborah's so nice. She says, yes, the best, and I've only received one. And I'm going to post it too so that you can join uh, in the comments on YouTube. Collections Knitting Club. Awesome. Um, so yeah, so we're sending the anniversary cowl out this month. Next month, we are sending out the um, sequence hat. And then the third month, which is April, we are sending out the Mia mitts. And Mia stands for Made in America. So the yarn and all the goodies that are in it 
are all U.S. made. So um, what was I going to say? Oh, and we're also going to give away uh, three months, this this three month subscription to a lucky winner. And I'm going to announce that winner in just in just a couple minutes. Um, OK, so first, let's talk about what's included. Um, luxury yarn. I, I said earlier today that we only use the best materials, and it's so true. We vary the brands each month, um, but you're going to find um, brands like from Universal Yarn, from Knitting Fever, El Array, Noro, um, Haiku, Skesel, and the, the fibers that you get to play with are things like alpaca, merino, which is a kind of wool, um, silk, cashmere, cotton and linen in the summer. Each kit includes one or two skeins of yarn, depending on the project. And each month you'll make a one or two skit, two skein wonder. Um, so it's, a, it's about a hundred grams of yarn. And so depending on the yarn's thickness or um, how many yards come in each ball, that's how, many, that's how much yarn you'll get, but it will be plenty to make the project. So it's like a delicious monthly bite-sized taste of knitting, and we really aim each month to teach you a new skill. Jess is a master at making the complicated look simple. So uh, to a newer knitter, looking at this lace cowl, you might think, I could never do this. You will be shocked at how she breaks it down. She gives you the written directions, she gives you the charts, and she gives you video tutorials. She has upped my design game so that when I design the kits, like I'm designing the fingerless mitts, I include charts, I include video tutorials, and we have the patterns tech edited professionally and also tested by other knitters. So that by the time it gets to you, all the, you know, all of the confusing bits have been worked out. Um, you can also join our deluxe version of the club. So if you join the deluxe version, we will send you the needles along with the project. The regular version comes with everything you see here on the left, except for the needles. But the anniversary cowl kit requires two sets of circular needles, one 16 inches long, one's 24 inches long. And so if you join the deluxe version of the kit, you get those needles included every month, the needles that you need for the project very convenient. You'll get a printed pattern, full color. Um, I think the anniversary cowl is maybe five pages long, um, but it's, it's complete. It's not because it's so complicated, it's because we give you all the information you need. You can also get a digital copy of the pattern. Um, you will be invited to our subscription Facebook club, which is a private group only for subscribers. And then you'll have a library of all the digital patterns that you have subscribed to and you can access those. And you get goodies. And again, goodies are like my favorite part. Um, this month you get um, pink Tooltron scissors. That's our brand color with a leather sheath. You get scented stitches, which are little balms that um, moisturize your cuticles so you don't have dry skin when you're knitting. And also, um, infuse a little bit of aromatherapy into your knitting. And you get a hand silk screened drawstring bag with our logo on it. And that is to keep your finished project clean and secure in the off season, and also to hold your project while you are knitting it. All right. All right, Kinette, this next slide is by you. So here's what, here's what some of our subscribers have to say. Kinette's been with me for years. Um, she has been a willing victim, participant in, in every kit that I've put out since the Stone Ages. Um, and here's what she has to say. She says, the spinning hand has the best box out there for knitting. Love the quality of the yarn and the choice of patterns. Whether you are learning to knit an expert or somewhere in between, this is a must-have box. And I so appreciate that, Kinette. Um, 
And we, we do try to find that sweet spot so that it's exciting for beginners. They're learning something new. And it's also not boring for people who are experts. It's more relaxing. And honestly, like, I guess you could call me an expert just that I've been doing it for 25 years, but I learn I learn new things from all of Jess's patterns. And I get to use all these different yarns. It's kind of like a yarn tasting and you find and discover brands that you just wouldn't have access to. Even if you shopped at your local yarn shop, they're not gonna carry everything. So you really get to try a lot of different kinds of yarns. Uh, and Deborah, I <laughs> featured you on a slide as well. I did three months, um, but I'm wishing I, I had done six. Don't worry, Deborah. Well, we got you covered. <laughs> and she did a subscription from someone else last year. So far, ours is wonderful and exceeds her expectations. So thank you. That's exactly what we strive for is to um, surprise and delight you. And then Debbie, I featured you, your words from yesterday too. She said, I found that the kits allow me to have gifts on hand for my friends. I just wanted to talk about that for a second. So um, I'm pretty sure that what she meant was once she finishes the projects, then she has something that she can give to other people. She doesn't have to keep them all for herself. But I also want to mention that we do give gift subscriptions. So if you are thinking about someone that you would like to treat for Mother's Day, um, for Valentine's Day, for their birthday. We've had retirement gifts, which I think was a really fun idea. Um, or just someone in your life who maybe is having some mental health struggles or physical health struggles and could really use some nourishing yarny mail every month, then the, the spinning hand kits make a wonderful, wonderful gift. And you can just send me a message and we will include a handwritten card uh, with any gift message that you like. Okay, the moment that you have all been waiting for. Each quarter we give away a three month subscription to, uh, to one of our community. Um, it's just a way to spread the love and we know that you're gonna love our boxes. So we want to um, we want to give that away to somebody. And let me just pick the person. Okay. All right. The winner of, drumroll please, the winner of the giveaway uh, from Valley City, North Dakota is Natalie Meyer. Congratulations, Natalie. I don't know if she's on. I don't think she's on, but I'm going to email everybody and, uh, and announce, excuse me. <coughs> I'm over Clint. Excuse me. So congratulations to Natalie. And we are going to be sending your kit out starting next week. Okay. Let me pull myself together here. Okay. So for those of you who didn't win, I don't want you to go home empty handed. The doors to our subscription knitting club close tonight. You can still save money on your three month or six month subscription. You can save $10 off with the code SAVE10. And we will ship the anniversary cow kits to you by February 18th. A lot of them will show up earlier, but, um, but everything will be shipped by the 18th. Sorry. And then we won't be opening the doors again until the end of April. So if you're interested in knitting the anniversary cowl, if you're interested in knitting the sequence hat, which is a unisex hat, wonderful for gifting. And if you're interested in learning to make 
fingerless mitts, you are not going to want to miss this club. So head on over to thespinninghand.com and you can use the Save 10 discount to save $10 on our three month or our six month subscription. And you'll just want to choose which, which club you want, whether you want regular or if you want to upgrade to deluxe and we will send you the needles. Okay, so I'm going to leave this slide up just for a minute, but then if anybody needs um, any more information or if you want to ask any questions, I'll just stay on for a little bit more. And uh, while I'm just waiting for any questions to come in, those of you who are on the live, let me know what you're doing this weekend. Are you staying inside? Are you knitting? Because it's going to be so cold. I'm going to be going to New York tomorrow and visit my son and his girlfriend. They, um, they go to school at FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology in the city. And we're going to Andrew's favorite ramen place. I cannot wait to see him. This was their first week of classes for this semester. So I want to see what they've been up to. Okay. Well, I know that some of the people on our uh, call today are already members. So I understand that you don't have any questions. Um, but if you have a question that you maybe don't want to ask in person, you can always email me. Um, <laughs> Susan says, thank you. This was very informative and she's staying in. It's too cold. Awesome. And Deborah says, hope to start my call early next week. Have a work in progress going on right now. This week has been great to get to know you. Yes. Great to get to know you too, Deborah. And I'm going to invite you to our um, Spinning Hand subscribers group so that we can have FaceTime. That will be really fun. Ooh, knit night on Saturday. Excellent. Jess, is that for the knit along? If so, I want to be there. Or is it private? And Debbie is going to be knitting and cooking. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Kinette is dying some yarn. I have loved seeing the results. Okay, great. And Jess, is it's the knit along. Good. I need to pick that up. Now that the launch is coming to an end, uh, yeah, I'm picking up the Color Crush shawl again. Beautiful. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, again, don't forget to check out our Knitting Club, doors close tonight. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.